Good afternoon. Our gathering song is number 144, Glory in the Cross, number 144. We will sing the Easter verses on the opposite page, number 144.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins. And so, prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the conqueror of sin and death. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament and strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him and, falling at his feet, paid him homage. Peter, however, raised him up, saying, Get up. I myself am also a human being. Then Peter proceeded to speak and said, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the word. The circumcised believers who had accompanied Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit should have been poured out on the Gentiles also, for they could hear them speaking in tongues and glorifying God. Then Peter responded, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit even as we have? He ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. The word of the Lord.
word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave doesn't know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give you. This I command you love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. From the earliest times, a recollection has been passed down regarding John the author of today's second reading, the selection of his letter that was read. He is the only, as you know, of the apostles who did not die a martyr's death. He lived to be very old. He was living in Ephesus. And remember, on the cross, Jesus had trusted him with the care of his mother. And there is where John did just that. But as years went on, and John was very advanced, the mobility was difficult. It would be the practice for men of the community to lift and carry him to the midst of the assembly where they gathered for the Eucharist. And after the recollections from the apostles, and the letters were shared, as we call it, the liturgy of the word, they would turn to him as the wise one among them, the one who walked with Jesus, the one who put his head on Jesus' chest and would say, Father, give us words of wisdom. They expected some sage advice. His response was always the same. He would say, love one another. So if he was here, that would be it. And that's what he did, time after time after time. And one time he said, Father, why? Why don't you say more than that? He said, because if you did that, that would be enough. We wonder why at times God won't intervene in the world and solve the conflicts between nations, the great injustices that so many suffer. And yet, God did his part in sending Jesus he reminds every single one of us who would be his followers, remain in my love. Not just choose when you want to be in my love. Remain in my love. And then he gives the caveat, and love one another. Not like you love a particular kind of food or a certain kind of car or a sporting event or all those things. We live in a society where people love things and unfortunately use people. He doesn't say use love as an excuse for doing whatever you want. No, there are various expressions of love. There is the one that expresses, I give my whole life to you. All I have is yours, and I receive it from you. In that exchange of love in the sacrament of marriage, when one notices the weaknesses of another, it's not the point of criticism if the love is like Christ's. It's the knowing sense of that's why God brought us together. I'm stronger where that one's weak. 
And it also is the humility it takes for us to not envy or pretend the strengths of the other don't exist, but to humbly accept them. Thus, in giving and receiving, the couple live what they express physically in the marital act, which is the expression of love within marriage that says, I am completely, totally yours. And it is the way God chose to bring life into the world. Hence, we can see why the church defends and speaks of it so much. Human sexuality is not bad or evil, and the church doesn't preach, so don't do that. It says it is the highest good, so stop twisting it. Stop using it for your own end. Stop objectifying. Say with your body only what you're saying with your life. I am completely, totally yours. And this love is so intense that if life is to come from this, our love can overflow to receive it. Yes, this Sunday is about love. And we might just say, oh yeah, okay, we hear all about that. But that's every reason why we should pause and say, how genuine is my love? Is it conditional? Do I love those who love me? Or is it unconditional, like Christ's? Do I seek to remain in the love of God by keeping his commandments? And when I step out of that, my choice, not him, he doesn't go anywhere, do I reclaim it in the sacrament of penance? I'll tell you, as a priest, the love that I experience for the flocks that I've served comes from being so deeply inspired and moved by the heroic faith that so many live, by the unexpected embraces of faith and good and right among those who others might overlook or think too young or too, think too insignificant. But I am just as moved by those whose love is obvious because they could care less what they might be in my eyes, but allow me to be the instrument that makes them who they want to be again in the sight of God, in the confessional. That's the kind of love God has. Not just loving those who are measuring up and who are performing according to expectation and even a bit above, but even those who fall flat on their face, but who care enough to get up. Because when we do that, then more often than not, that's how we treat other people when they fall flat on their face. No, there is emotion involved in love. But love is so much more than an emotion. Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you, unconditionally, even when undeserved and unto death. I'm sure you would agree that as we look back at our life, we really know the people who truly love us not when we're performing up to par, but when we recognize I was pretty unlovable. I was pretty difficult. I was pretty much a cause of pain. <laughs> and they didn't abandon me. They saw something that I had lost and helped me to find it again. That's the kind of love that can change the world. That's the kind of love he calls us to. The year I graduated from high school, a song came out. Now I'm gonna date myself. I was on the radio, it was everywhere. You light up my life. It talks about finding love, full of emotion. And then the last line. It can't be wrong when it feels so right. You light up my life. What is right and what is wrong is not determined by the emotion of the moment, but by the one who loved us enough to reveal the truth and to call us to reflect that truth. And in the uniqueness of our vocations, to live it out. May we truly discover how much God loves us and what the call to love really, truly entails.
because then when we do, a very old and simple prayer, often made upon glancing at this image of Jesus, takes on great significance. Whether we're speaking of our spouse, our children, our family, our friends, or the people who drive us out of our mind, or those we are quick to judge and condemn. Love does not condone, nor does it condemn. It seeks to enlighten and proclaim the truth. Our hearts can't be hardened, our hearts can't be closed. Our hearts can't be conditional. We heard that in the first reading. They were ticked off. Who are these people? They're not in our group. Peter cuts right through it and baptizes them. No, realizing how true all of this is and settling for nothing less than loving as God loves us. May we look at that image and pray that old prayer, not by memory, but by heart. Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make our hearts like unto thine. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was his heart and virgin For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us in trust bring our needs to God. For our parish community, may the love and concern we manifest to one another and those around us be a compelling witness to the compassionate love of Christ and his church, as was obvious in the early church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for all nations, that united efforts might bring justice and peace to all who live in oppression and persecution and may promote the dignity and sanctity of all life without condition. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those discerning a call to church vocations, especially those discerning among us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of Lisa Courier, for which this Mass is offered today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our departed brothers and sisters, may they know the fullness of joy in the kingdom of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have asked for our prayers and for the needs of one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Receive, Almighty Father, what we offer in confident faith through Christ our Lord. Please join together in singing number 493, Where Charity and Love Prevail, number 493.
thy sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation showed himself the priest to the altar and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. Even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst and we're gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. And therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you, send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of 
Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, whom you seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and offer you the bread of life and chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. Grant by the power of the spirit of your love we be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters and inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor in our burden. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. May your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, all the dead whose faith you alone have known, and admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them fullness of life. And grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. By divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And we offer a sign of peace.
refrain number three on the worship aid inside the front cover of your hymnal. Refrain number three, one heart, one mind.
Would you please join together in singing number 164, Be Joyful Mary, number 164. Almighty and ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of the saving food, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. By now you should have received the brochure and envelopes at your home from the diocese. The annual New, Cath New Hampshire Catholic Appeal is underway. This is a very tangible way of expressing love in action beyond our own limited circle. The very important ministries, the formation of our seminarians, the care of our retired priests, the support of New Hampshire Catholic Charities and its social service agencies throughout our entire state, as well as so many other things as defined in the uh, brochure. So I thank those who've already uh, sent in those envelopes. You can simply drop it in the collection next Sunday. Uh, you could just fill it out. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything put into it immediately. Again, as I said last week, since this replaces about 10 collections and appeals that used to be scattered through the year, please give that very serious consideration. Those things cannot receive a cut in funding. The needs are greater than ever. But it will take planning to be able to do something in a way that perhaps is paid over the, the months of the appeal. And so we'd like to wrap it up by the end of May. Please give prayerful consideration. If you do not get a brochure or envelope, they're available near the bulletins. Uh, and thanks again to those who already, and especially those uh, last year, who responded so generously to the New Hampshire Catholic Appeal. We remind you this Thursday, the 40th day of Easter, is a holy day of obligation, the solemnity of our Lord's Ascension. There will be three masses as noted in the bulletin. The day following, we begin to prepare for Pentecost, the final day of the Easter season next Sunday. That's a time to offer the Novena to the Holy Spirit for growth in the virtues and gifts that he can give us. If you would like a text for the Novena to the Holy Spirit that begins on Friday, those are available in racks near the bulletin as well. Don't forget, this is the last call to enroll women living or deceased in the Mother's Day Enrollment Remembrance. Vocation Rosary is this Wednesday. The Young Adult Ministry has a hike coming up next Saturday. Uh, there is a men's retreat opportunity as well. And in honor of Mother's Day next Sunday, uh, we have the May Crown. And so all those details are in the bulletin. I would like at this time to make um, a special announcement. Uh, we're coming up on three years since two of the sons of our parish, Father Bobby and Father Joseph, were ordained to the priesthood. And so, uh, having completed the first parts of their assignments, on June the 3rd, Father Bobby will become the pastor of Christ the King Parish in Reading, Massachusetts. He serves as a priest in the Archdiocese of Boston. And so we keep him in prayer for that transition as well. 
and Father Joseph, who since last August has been temporary as administrator in Peterborough, New Hampshire, a priest of our diocese, um, has received word from the bishop and assigned to ongoing theological studies to be able to earn his advanced theological degree, which will help the diocese in various ways and also uh, enable him to, to be able to teach. And so we certainly uh, rejoice in the use of our brother's gifts. So Father Joseph will be finished in Peterborough on June the 28th and will be arriving here among us. Uh, this will kind of be a home base. He'll be with us for a little bit before he heads out uh, to begin his studies. And so we look forward to welcoming him with us. And Father Joseph will be uh, at the Angelicum, the University of St. Thomas Aquinas in Rome. And for the next few years, he will be there in Rome studying for that degree. So certainly uh, we wish both of them abundant grace and blessings in these new responsibilities as priests. The Lord be with you. And, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please join together in singing number 497, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, number 497. <laughs> 